Hello and welcome to the Meathead Marksman channel. My name's Hodge and today on this episode of The Quiet Rifle we're going to shoot some high powered groups. Um, I don't often shoot high powered groups and um, we're going to go into that after the groups um, just to clear up a whole bunch of confusion that I get in the comments on my channel. Um, this is going to sort of serve as a uh, explanation channel trailer type video as well. But before we get too deep into the weeds, let's have a look at how the groups went. Um, the conditions weren't ideal, so I, I would call these real world conditions. I had uh, wind gusting from anywhere between sort of 5 k's an hour up to about 15 k's an hour. You can see just by looking at the trees, um, usually when my uh, groups blow out left and right, it's due to the wind. Uh, especially on these full power groups, but the results were uh, reasonable, I would say, um, especially considering all the factors at play. So I'm not the best bench rest shooter in the world. I'm a reasonably good shooter, but I'm not very good. I wouldn't say that I'm very good. And obviously the wind is probably the biggest factor here. But um, before I started shooting these groups, you can see a few little holes peppered in the target around there. Um, I was doing a bit of barrel harmonics tuning, so you just sort of shoot a group and then um, adjust your hammer spring on the hammer spring wheel to uh, lower the speed a little bit or, or up the speed if you started low and then um, see which groups end up coming out the best and uh, I had my top end power today um, I didn't really put too much effort into the tune I just cranked it up to my reg up to 150 bar and then um, I'm basically just valve bouncing with the hammer spring um, just as a quick and easy way of doing things just for this because I don't normally shoot on high power so I'm not planning on leaving it like that but just for today's video so that I could uh, show show off some of the the chops of the gun I shot some groups at the tippity top of the power scale at about sort of between 950 and 960 feet per second they ended up being around that sort of uh, two and a half to three inch mark and then um, I wound it all the way back down uh, working through my different settings and ended up with setting B which was giving me a vertical dispersion of less than an inch at 100 meters. Um, the horizontal dispersion was a little bit wider because of the wind um, and yeah but either way uh, B was looking promising so I went and coronied B and B was between 910 and 920 feet per second for those of you playing at home so if you're interested in shooting uh, 700 mil barrel with um, 34 grain JSBs. That's a pretty good speed from, from what I can tell. Your mileage may vary, every gun's a little bit different, but that's fine. Um, might be a good starting point if you're looking for a uh, fairly high powered, fastish tune. So once I had settled on that, um, that setting, I came back down and started shooting these groups. Now, you can see that I'm not taking my time between shots. Um, I'm sitting on a wobbly table. I'm doing everything wrong basically and the atmospheric conditions are garbage. There's swirling wind um, and it's still shooting great groups. So by great for me, I think you have to take in all of these different things into account. Um, you can't just sort of expect one whole groups in anything other than perfect conditions. Um, you need a really good shooter. You need really good atmospheric conditions. You need a good harmonically tuned gun. You need sorted ammo, you need all sorts of different things and I think it's sort of it's wise to temper your expectations if you're going to ignore all of that and then just go down into your backyard and shoot like I do. Um, these pellets are straight out of the tin, I didn't sort them at all, um, it's just 910 feet per second, 34 grain JSBs, straight out of the tin, straight down the range in whatever conditions you have at the time. For all of those reasons, I'm happy with these groups and I think it's a good uh, indicator of what the gun's capable of. If you have better conditions and a better shooter, you're going to get better groups. Uh, if you take more time to sort your ammo, you're going to get better groups. This is purely so that I can, I can show you that the gun does shoot uh, and you don't have to do any of the things that I do to my gun to get it to shoot. Um, all you have to do, uh, even if you don't want to tune at all, is take the gun straight out of the box Use the ammo that FX tells you to use with it and it's going to shoot great. There's, there's no question about it. It happens all the time. My crown shot great, my impact shot great. It's, it's all good. There's no, there's no issue there. Uh. <coughs> and as you can see, because of the conditions, when there's a lull in the wind, I'm just sort of 
waiting for it to die down to sort of around that below that three to five kilometer an hour mark and then I'm just going I'm not uh, taking my time between shots it's sort of just like one breath shoot maybe two breaths shoot and yeah so I'm gonna let these play through in real time usually I edit my footage so that um, I can cut out the distance between the shots because it's kind of boring to watch um, but we're just gonna let these ones play through while I'm talking um, so the first group was pretty good uh, that was about I think it was about 30 millimeters um, for five shots at 100 meters so that's just over an inch um, I believe one MOA at 100 meters instead of 100 yards is actually 27 millimeters so it's just a little bit over one MOA that group which is pretty good all things considered and then um, as time wore on and I sat and waited for a lull in the wind I shot a couple more groups and they were a little bit bigger they were uh, around that sort of 45 46 mil mark which is about just over one and a half MOA so the average for my um, rushed groups in rubbish wind with unsorted pellets is one to one and a half maybe 1.6 MOA definitely under two MOA at 100 meters um, and for me that's great um, you may have different standards for your guns which that's fine I, I get it if you are a proper bench rest shooter if you um, if you really take the time and that's really your passion your your expertise level is higher than mine I can see how you would find these groups unacceptable but I don't I think this is great for me um, I've been shooting for a long time and I'm, I know that I'm not the most talented shooter in the world and I've I shouldn't really be expecting better results than this with my level of um, expertise on the subject. So there you have it. The gun um, with me behind the wheel in rubbish conditions with unsorted pellets is shooting between 1 and 1 1.6 MOA or thereabouts. Um, now when you see my other videos of when I'm shooting and you're seeing groups that uh, sort of two to three inches, maybe even four to six inches at 100 meters. That's because I'm shooting on low power, right? The, um, there are no suppressors in Australia for folks like myself. If you're a professional pest controller, you can get a special license that allows you to have a suppressor. But um, for your average Joe Schmo like me, I can't have one. Um, there's been lots of petitions um, raised by lots of different organizations that represent Australian shooters to try and get um, suppressors legalized in Australia but all of them generally get met with the same reply from the police commissioner and it just says lol no uh, for whatever reason I think they watch too many movies but um, it is what it is we aren't allowed to have suppressors um, the shroud that you see on my barrel um, the actual air stripper in the end of it doesn't have holes in it so it's basically a straight through pipe there's no sound deadening at all from that um, and as such with all of those things said it's when you're shooting on full power it's like ever so slightly quieter than a subsonic 22 and a fast subsonic 22 as well like one that's going right around that sort of 950 to 1050 feet per second mark just below the speed of sound so it's loud it's not a quiet gun uh, when it is on full power but you can tune it right back down you can change all the different settings on it and make it a very very quiet gun um, and generally when i'm shooting those big groups that you see at 100 meters those groups are very small at 25 they're generally one whole groups at 25 meters and at 50 meters they're about an inch so and that that's something that i can shoot with all day without bo uh, bothering my neighbors and that's very valuable to me that's and and this this whole channel is pretty much dedicated to um, well at least this playlist is dedicated to tinkering around and trying to find um, the best settings the best um, twist rates and the best pellets and the best everything for um, very quiet shooting without a suppressor it's quite a it's quite a niche approach um, and there probably aren't that many people who will be super interested in what I'm doing uh, per se so I hope you find the videos entertaining but that's that's what 
I'm trying to do. I'm not, like if I, if I wanted to shoot full power all the time, I probably could get away with it. My property is obviously big enough and safe enough to do that, but I just don't want to bother my neighbors um, because all of our houses are reasonably close to where I've got my little shooting range cut in. So I sort of, I have to weigh up um, being a good citizen or having tiny groups, right? So <laughs> it's um, the the whole quiet shooting thing is, is what I'm really interested in. If I could just have a suppressor, there would be no issue. I would shoot on full power all the time, but um, I don't want to do that. Um, we all have neighbors that um, we sort of have to sort of have a bit of give and take with. And even if you, you know, your neighbor might have a dog that barks for 20 hours a day, like my neighbor does, but um, we sort of say that we're okay with it, but we're not really. So I just, I don't want to be that annoying guy. I want to have my, um, my hobby to sort of work with everybody around me as well. So let's, uh, let's sort of talk about the format of the channel at the moment. The channel has um, three different playlists, I think. Probably should double check that. But there's the quiet rifle playlist, which is um, all of the shooting content. And then there's the Bro Jogan experience, which is the archery content. And then there's kind of like a vloggy sort of thing for um, the rest of the rubbish that I just want to throw out there to scratch my creative itch. That's going to be things like playing computer games and going on adventures and doing stuff that doesn't really pertain much to archery or shooting, but is still kind of in the sort of outdoorsy kind of a realm um, or the interesting to me realm so yeah that's that's the way things are going to go down if you are just um if you're just sort of receiving them your videos from me off your um youtube sort of homepage feed uh, you probably won't be able to tell the difference between them uh, so i'm thinking maybe in the future i'll add something to my thumbnails maybe like a black line on the the edge of the thumbnail for um, the quiet rifle maybe a green line for the archery stuff and then a I don't know, a blue line or something, or changed colours. But there'll be some sort of identifier on um, on the thumbnail, so if you're not interested in watching me shoot my bow, um, just don't click on those videos. And if you don't like video game content, you will, you'll know. You'll know straight away. So there'll be no, no confusion. You can just ignore the stuff that you're not interested in, um, and it should hopefully streamline it. Um, I may make a second channel in the future, I don't know maybe but uh, one channel in itself is a lot of work so we'll probably just leave it at that for now and then just differentiate the, um, the, the different content with different thumbnails. So I hope that clears a few things up. Um, thanks for watching, I do appreciate it, I, I do enjoy your patronage um, but yeah that's, that's the lay of the land and that's how things are going to be so hopefully that uh, clears up all the questions. Um, and if you get linked to this video, um, that's probably why I'm probably trying to use it to answer whatever complex question that's too long to type is. So, cool. See you in the next one. Bye.